Hi, so these notes are over 5.3, which is congruent angles associated with parallel lines. Our essential question is how can I use parallel lines to determine whether angle pairs are congruent or supplementary? Basically, what this section is about, in a nutshell, is taking the ideas from 5.2, um, which proved that lines were parallel, and instead of proving lines are parallel based on angles being congruent or supplementary, now we are given parallel lines. And because they're parallel, we can then say, oh, well, that means these angles are congruent or these angles are supplementary. So we'll talk about that in just a second. This first theorem is called the parallel postulate. And it makes a lot of sense. It says through a point, not on a line. So we've got a line, and we have some point that's not on it. It says there is exactly one line parallel to the given line. So remember, we're going through this point. Through this point, there's exactly one line that's parallel to the given line. So I can draw only one line through this point that can be parallel to that given line. Now, there are other types of geometries that are called non-Euclidean that can disprove this, that can either show you that there are more than one line that go through a point um, that's parallel to the given line, or that there are no lines. Um, if you'd like more information on that, just let me know. This next theorem is so important that you remember, and I'm going to draw you a picture in a minute that can help you remember it. But it says, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, so it is given that the lines are parallel, then if you pick any pair, any two angles, they will either be congruent or they will be supplementary. Okay, so take a look at what I've drawn here. I've drawn two parallel lines. I can see that by this parallel these little arrows that indicate that they're parallel. And what I've done is I've color-coded the eight angles. I've kind of alternated between two colors. And you can do this on your notes as well. If I pick any two of these eight angles, they will either be equal or they will add to 180. They'll either be congruent or they'll be supplementary. So here's kind of the key that you use. If I pick two angles, and they're the same color. Okay, that means they're going to be equal to each other. So I would just set their expressions equal to each other, whatever they are. Let's say they happen to be the other color. Again, they're going to be equal to each other. But let's say I pick one of each color, or I'm given one of each color, two angles that have different colors. Their relationship is that they're going to be supplementary. So when I add them, they will equal 180 degrees. If you, use, if you use this diagram kind of to help you when you're writing these algebraic uh, equations, it will really help you. If they've got the same colors, set them equal to each other. If they're different colors, add their expressions and have it equal 180. So now I'm going to go through the different type of angle pairs so you can just prove to yourself that this makes sense. These are all converses of the things we learned in 5.2. So for example, let's take a look at alternate interior angles. In this picture, 3 and 6 are a pair of alternate interior angles. Notice they're the same color. That means they're congruent. That means we can set their expressions equal to each other. Another pair of alternate interior angles are 4 and 5. They are also the same color. We can also set their expressions equal to each other. The same is true for alternate exterior angles, 1 and 8. They're the same color, set them equal to each other. 2 and 7, they're the same color, set them equal to each other. Corresponding angles, an example of corresponding angles would be 1 and 5. Same color, set them equal. Or 3 and 7, same color, set them equal. 
or 2 and 6. Same color, set them equal, or 4 and 8, same color, set them equal. The other type of angle pairs are the same side interior and same side exterior. An example of those, an example of same side interior would be like 3 and 5. Notice that's a blue and a yellow. They're different colors. They're not congruent. They're supplementary. So you're going to add those expressions and have them equal 180. Same is true with 4 and 6. They're also same side interior, different colors. Add them together. Have them equal 180. Let's look at same side exterior. 1 and 7 is an example. Different colors. Add them together. Together. <laughs> have them equal 180. Or 2 and 8. Same side exterior. Add them together. Equal 180. Okay, we've got two more theorems and then two examples. Let's look at this theorem. In a plane, if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, so the given part of this theorem is we've got two parallel lines. I'm going to show that with these little arrows. And it says a line is perpendicular to one of them. So let's say I draw a line. This line happens to be perpendicular to this top parallel line. Then according to this theorem, that means it is also perpendicular to the other parallel line. If you think about why this is true, it absolutely makes sense. If lines are parallel, you know, and if you look at the, the two angles that, here that I have denoted with the box to make sure that they're right angles, if you look at those two, um, if two lines are parallel, then these two angles, which would be corresponding, have to be congruent. So if one is a right angle, the other one has to be a right angle. The last theorem says if two lines are parallel to a third line, okay, so let's think about what this given looks like. We've got two lines. and they are each parallel to a third line. So let's say this is the third line. Okay. So the top line is parallel to the third line. Okay. And the middle line is parallel to the third line. Maybe I'll use two arrows. Then that means they are all parallel to each other. I don't even need... Uh, those last symbols, I can just go like this. They're all three parallel. Okay, here's the first of our two examples. We've got this picture, and our directions are to find the measure of angle one and the measure of angle two. Well, measure of, or angle one and angle two are both near the two angles that have the expressions 3x plus 5 degrees and 2x plus 10 degrees. If I look at the two expressions that I'm given, the angles that they go with are alternate interior. I know that they are going to be congruent if my lines are parallel, which I forgot to tell you are parallel. <laughs> so these two expressions are congruent, which means they're equal. So we're going to start off by setting them equal to each other. 3x plus 5 equals 2x plus 10. On the little color-coded thing that we drew earlier, these have the same color. So all we have to do now is to solve this equation. Subtract 2x from both sides. We get 1x plus 5 equals 10. Subtract 5 from both sides. We get x equals 5. Fantastic. Now we're going to go ahead and evaluate what we've got so we can figure out how big the angle measures are around these angles. If I plug in 5 into the two x's that I've got, into the first one, 3 times 5 is 15, plus 5 is 20. So this angle right here is 20 degrees. If I look at angle 1, angle 1 is vertical to it, so I know that it's congruent to it. So angle 1 has a measure of 20 degrees. The second angle, the 2x plus 10, 
if I evaluate that one, x equals 5, 2 times 5 is 10, plus another 10 is 20, which makes sense because this angle needs to be congruent to the other angle. So this also equals 20 degrees. However, angle 2 is right next to it. Those two are supplementary. So right here, I'm going to subtract the 20 from 180 to figure out that this measure is 160. So the measure of angle 2 equals 160 degrees. These are my two solutions. Okay, in this last example, it says find the measure of angle 1. We've got um, two lines that are parallel. I'm telling you they're parallel. And it looks like we've got this crooked transversal. It kind of like changes directions right between the two parallel lines. So this type of problem you're going to see more of. This is called a crook problem. Okay? We call that a little crook when it changes directions. What you're going to want to do in this type of problem is draw an auxiliary line. And that auxiliary line is going to also be parallel to the two parallel lines. And it's going to go right through the crook. It's going to look just like this. Okay, so what we now have is three parallel lines. Um, what, the easiest way to do this is to kind of look at angle one into two parts. We've got this part, and we've got this part. And when we look at the top part of angle one, we're going to ignore what's below that auxiliary line. And when we look at the bottom part of angle one, we're going to ignore what's above the auxiliary line. So if we take a look be above the auxiliary line and ignore what's below it, this angle right here is on the same side interior as this guy up here. Okay? Same side interior angles add up to 180, which means if this one at the top is 100 degrees, then this angle right here equals 80 degrees. The top part of angle 1 equals 80 degrees. Now we're going to look at the bottom part below our auxiliary line, the bottom part of angle 1. On the bottom part of angle 1, we've got this angle we need to try to figure out its measure. And we also have the 40 degrees. Well, the 40 degrees happens to be alternate interior with that bottom part of angle 1, which means they are congruent. So this bottom part of angle 1 also has a measure of 40 degrees. To get the total measure of angle 1, we're just going to add the top and the bottom together. 80 plus 40 gives us a total measure for angle 1 of 120 degrees. And that's it. The crook problems are super simple if you draw that auxiliary line right through that uh, crook. So that's all for the notes. Here are the problems for 5.3. Please attempt them if you would like to. Otherwise, just wait until Tuesday. We'll do them in class. I hope you have a great weekend, and I hope that you've written down all your questions so we can get them answered on Tuesday. See you then.